¿Tienes ya claro que para el día a día de tu trabajo vas a necesitar grabar vídeos con el móvil? Esta vez no te lo decimos nosotros, que hemos impartido ya más de 50 talleres para enseñar a hacer vídeo con móviles a cirujanos, odontólogos, periodistas, profesionales independientes, gestores de turismo, especialistas en marketing, agentes inmobiliarios, empresas de producción, de casi cualquier cosa. No te lo vamos a contar nosotros, sino que vamos a ceder la palabra a cuatro de los mejores formadores en vídeo con móviles de Europa, tanto independientes como de la BBC o de Radio Televisión Irlandesa. I've trained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people in uh, mobile journalism and I kind of see two layers. There are some people who are just happy to know that if there's a breaking story, they could get a few shots, maybe grab an interview, that's as far as they want to go. But increasingly I'm finding people see once they get their hands on the tool, it's capable of so much more. I mean, if this is being shot on a phone, you know, that can shoot 4K quality. So if you can shoot that kind of quality, get decent audio, then why not push it further? The other thing about phones, obviously, is they can do social media content, all sorts of content. So I've also seen training go beyond just traditional kind of video training to people also wanting to know, how can I take a decent picture? How can I um, make my social media content more lively? Um, but the way I see this going is at the moment, we've had the keen ones who come first on the courses. Then a few people are not sure, but they're willing to try it out. And I think we're getting to the point now where it's going to become a base skill, where everybody's going to need to be able to make professional level content on their phones because it's going to be seen as part of their job like logging onto a computer and typing is just part of your job now in the same way being able to shoot good video get good audio get some decent photos and feed stuff to social media is something that everybody's going to need to be trained to do so like i say uh we've trained lots of people but i think we're just really at the beginning of all this I've been training BBC journalists for the last three or four years how to use their mainly iPhones, very occasionally Android phones, to record, edit and send content from the field back to the BBC newsroom, but increasingly to get the content from their phones straight on, onto social media so that it doesn't come into the building, it goes onto Twitter, it goes onto Facebook or Instagram. The majority of BBC journalists still, though, record the content, send it back to the newsroom, where it is then edited, put into a package that is broadcast on TV or online or a radio recording. But we are finding that more and more of our journalists recognise the importance of social media either as a promotional vehicle, a way for people to find out about BBC content, or as a way of immediately letting our audience know about stories that our journalists are covering. The iPhone has been a transformative device. The fact that many journalists across the BBC have a device in their pocket almost at all times, which is good enough for broadcast transmission, means that we no longer have to send a broadcast camera or a radio car to every story. Where necessary, of course, we will still send our proper broadcast equipment. But the iPhone in particular is now so good that only a professional video editor would notice the difference between the footage an iPhone can record against the footage that a proper broadcast camera can record, as long as people know how to use it properly. Anyone can use an iPhone badly. Knowing how to use an iPhone to record video well is not so easy. Uh, my experience in motor training is mainly based on my experience in Germany. So if you teach a motor class in Germany, then it's usually that about, uh, if you have 10 people, for example, then there are uh, seven to eight people who turn up with, I uh, with Android phones, uh, two, one with iPhone or two with iPhones, and one with uh, the odd uh, Windows phone. So that in itself is a bit tricky because you have to satisfy all the people, right? So uh, I, I experienced that Mojo training globally is very iOS-centered, uh, very much uh, tuned to iPhones. But um, I think that Android devices uh, are also cool devices. It depends only on what you produce for. If you produce for the internet, for example, then you can do it with almost every Android device, right? So if you work for TV, then you might want to buy maybe uh, an iOS, an, an iPhone, iOS device. So training is always a bit complicated and that has to do, if you want to make all the Android guys happy, there's one problem with Android, it's called fragmentation. 
because you have so many different brands, you have so many different devices around the globe. Some people claim that there are thousands of Android devices around the globe. And it's very, very difficult for developers to make their apps run smoothly on every single device. As a matter of fact, they can't do it. They can't guarantee it. So that is always, it goes like this. I tell them what apps to use. Let's say, use video show for editing. And then the first people would start saying, you know, video show, this app doesn't work on my Huawei XP whatever. And then the other one says, oh, my Sony Xperia whatever does not agree well with this and that app. On the other hand, if you're used to that, the beautiful thing about Android is there's always a workaround, you know, in contrast to Apple. When there something goes wrong, you always have to call in the cavalry. That means the support. So as well as being a mojo and making my own mojo reports, I'm also involved in training people. I train some of my colleagues in RTE uh, and we've made that training available to everyone. So we could be training journalists, we could be showing camera operators a few new tricks, we could be training video editors. I've also trained uh, some of the younger members of staff as well in RTE. I've also trained students in colleges and I have been involved in a training program with CIRCOM, which is the uh, a European network of broadcasters, and I've trained journalists from different countries as well. So, yes, people from all sorts of different backgrounds, all sorts of different skills and abilities. The one thing that we all share, though, is that we all have a phone, and we're all interested in trying to use it and, and maximize the capabilities and the potential of that. Thank you for your words. Thank you, Philip, Mark. Thank you, Bernard, and the other Mark. See you soon.